hold stay with me here because we've got a whole heap of people here on this stream tonight so welcome everybody to this barrel selection we're we'll doing tonight we are doing a bull run 13 year american whiskey and we've got a got a got a big crew tonight but ryan how you doing my friend it's like i haven't seen you Man. since this afternoon this ready to like start dropping beats after that you know just like start going and flow freestyle what's your yeah drop some bars for us what do you got no, no. Uh, I, I can't do that i'm i'm from bardstown we don't know how to rap what is rap <laughs> i'm sure you can figure it out yeah no i'm good uh yeah excited for this uh yeah 13 years is exciting it is, and uh, I'll let everybody else kind of know like why I'm excited for this. I had mentioned it on our, our Patreon a little bit earlier, and that's because you know this is there's there's a few different distilleries that are putting out this this 13 year American whiskey, and uh, it's it is a sourced type of um, you know ex bourbon barrel type of whiskey. Now, one thing is is there are a few different few different names out there, uh, old something. I'm not going to drop any names, but. Uh, they usually sell these for about one hundred and seventy-five dollars a bottle, and upwards of around two hundred to two fifty. And I think these are going to come in probably around like sixty, seventy. So I'm super excited for that. And I know there's a lot of people that were in Discord that were excited for this as well because the cat might be out of the bag of what we're what we're selecting tonight. So really cool to be able to do that. All right. So before we uh, kind of get into it, we want to do a quick round of introductions here. So we're just going to start and just kind of like go through the whole maze here. So, uh, Tim, I'll let you just go first and uh, just introduce yourself, uh, who you are and, and where you're from. Uh, my name is Tim Long. I live uh, in Lakeville, Mass, south of Boston, and i uh, just psyched to be here tonight. And we have a history. Tim and I used to work together uh, a long time ago at another three letter company. So it's uh, it's good to see your face again, buddy. Yeah, you too. So you don't know, you don't remember this, but I went to Julio's after one of your after you were visiting up in Marlboro and uh, um, bought. I was, I was a Scotch drinker and bought an Eagle Rare um, lock or uh, Eagle Julio's pick. It was yeah. so much better in when Scotch, wasn't it? <laughs> and, yeah and that was the end of scotch quite frankly it was so yeah. you don't know that but that's you know that was what started this it's all nice it's all you kenny that's well awesome. uh, it's it's i'm excited to be able to do something like that i mean i remember because i used to travel up to uh all the boroughs up there somebody doesn't know what happens in new england there's just like there's marlboro east borough west borough uh used to have to travel up there all the time and um i forget even who turned me onto julio's and used to just go there and I would just get a bottle every once in a while. Wow. But I do remember the one of the last times I went, they were selling the black maple hill, the orange label with the black wax on it. And they were selling it for like two hundred dollars a bottle. And I mean that was like it was it wasn't top of the market, but it was it was up there and I was just like ah fine, I'll take four of them. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, and I uh, because I knew that they were going to appreciate in value, and I'm kind of glad I held on to them. So I think I've got uh, one left that's unopened, and I've got another one. I think I don't know what the value is, but that's, I'm, it's one of those things. At least I made a good bet on it, but we'll we'll leave it at that. And you probably drank the other two, right? I I, I drank uh, one of them for sure, and then I've got about this much left. Another, and I the reason I, I I don't really go to anymore is when people come over, I let them drink it just to see the disappointment. I mean, <laughs> that's because it's everybody's just like, oh my god, you and you try it and you're like, yeah, it's not that good. So yeah, it's that's the best part. Your, your value just went down. So way to go. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm saving people from themselves on it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll we'll keep this going. Uh, or this can be the longest introductions <laughs> of all time. So Sean, same question to you. Welcome, uh, and then kind of tell us a little about yourself and where you're from. Yeah, my name is Sean Labrant. I'm from uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm super excited to do this tonight. Cool. Glad to have you. Chris, you're in the middle, man. Hey, everybody. Uh, Chris Bush. I'm in uh, Indianapolis and uh, looking forward to it. Excited to uh, give this a shot tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to have you here as well. Anthony, already unmuted yourself. You knew it was going to happen. Yes, I did. Anthony Vore, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and just excited to do a barrel pick. Yeah, I guess uh, we should, I should have started that. Uh, the question is is this your first barrel pick? Have you done it before? Tim, we'll start up there with you. First. First, Sean? Yeah. First, Chris? 
Nice. Uh, one, one. Anthony? <laughs> this is the second with you and about my fourth. Awesome. What, what was the awesome. one we did before together? Uh, Barrel. That's uh, right. Nerd Bomb and Rome Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, those that's, are good ones. That's Nerd good Bomb one. is just yeah, the Nerd shit. Bomb. <laughs> And I was surprised there's Rum Spring right is still for there. sale. <laughs> yeah. See, Nate's, Nate knows what he's talking about down there. Yeah, that nerd bomb is, dude, it's amazing. Yeah. All right, Sam. Yeah, Sam, what about you? Well, this is my first pick. And uh, I guess I'll introduce myself to yes, uh, my name is Sam Ferullo. I am up, I'm all the way up in the Northwest in Seattle. So I'm nice. uh, happy to kind of represent that, that side of the country. Right? Yeah. We're all over we the place here. Seattle. For sure. And Nate, wrap it up for us here, buddy. Yeah, hey guys, my name's Nate Gordon. I'm a Virginian uh, that's been transplanted into Colorado, so I'm currently in Colorado Springs. Nice. Very I love nice. your top, I love your top shelf up there. Yeah, top shelves. Yeah, well, good. actually, that's 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 not quite the top. But oh, that's just because don't do that to us. We come on. <laughs> that, I I was waiting for someone to say that. It's it's mostly just because the bottles are so much taller up there. So. But yeah, no, I got plenty of. Uh, I, we'll I just, take I like any space on the it. shelf. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for the support, and, and thank you all again for your support uh, and helping us in the podcast. And uh, very excited for you all to be able to to join us here tonight, being able to do this. Yeah, no doubt. So we all have uh, four different samples with mm -hmm. us. They should be pretty easy. We're gonna we're gonna go. In, uh, I'd, yeah, chronological order. So you have sam barrel sample one, two, three, and four. I, I was wondering if you were going to go in numerical order. I was, I was, I was about to say <laughs> alphabetical, and I was like, uh, you better slow your roll. I'm glad they thing. made it easy. I'd like it instead of doing the barrel numbers because I'm terrible at math, and so this is great. <laughs> yeah, they, we're not swayed by some sexy barrel number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so the, the proofs on these are all over the place. We'll kind of save that a little bit towards the end once we're tasting through these. But um, I'm going to go ahead, pour a little bit into each glass, and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of start the process there. Now, with this many people, I kind of gave a pre-warning before we went live here, is that since we have this many people, don't go crazy drinking at all because if we get towards the end and we have a three-way tie and you don't have enough to be able to do a, a taste off. We're going to be in some, some dire straits. I'm glad you said that because I just dumped all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I put them all in the same glass. Is that okay? <laughs> we were doing a blend. Yeah, we're doing a blend. <laughs> yeah. We're, this is a blending exercise of 13 year American whiskey. So is this the same? Uh, well, no, because that American whiskey and barrels, uh, eighteen year, right? Correct. That we were working with, and this is okay. Yeah, different. I believe this is MGP. So, gotcha. You oh. said Old Saint Nick is doing it too. Uh, no. Okay. Old, old somebody. Old, old Car Carter. Mm. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So I just had to clear my throat there. So, that's when I said where the uh, the price tags come from. So. Gotcha. Uh, you know, everybody except Anthony, this is kind of the drill. And this is usually what I always say if you haven't caught a, a live barrel selection with us before is that um, there is no right way to, or wrong way to do this, but this is the way that we do it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> what I'll typically do is I'll go through, nose them all first, um, and then write some notes as I'm going along, whether they are, um, you know, tasting notes or just check boxes. That's kind of up to you of, of, of what you want. Um, after we get done nosing them, then we'll go and taste them. And seeing as how we have this many people on here, we'll probably take it down to maybe a top one vote, maybe a top two. We'll see how we're feeling at like the, you know, the 35, 40 minute mark. And we'll, we'll take a vote from there and kind of see where we're at at that point. So 128 per, we might be sleeping. <laughs> well, that's what you'll, we'll kind of, since there's really no mystery. So this is a uh, barrel. Number one is 126. Barrel. Number two is 128. Barrel number three is 118, and barrel number four is another 128 proofer. And everybody's going to ask, yes, they are going to be bottled at cash strength. So, but guys, feel free to kind of chime in with any. What's the uh, MGP American whiskey? What do you. Ex bourbon barrel? I mean, well, no, I know, but what's the match bill, do you think, on that? Oh, shit. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't ask but, that many questions. Isn't that like corn whiskey, right? It's like really, really high corn. 
Or is this just like one of their it, it, standard bourbon mash bills just because it's in an ex bourbon cask? That's kind of what I'm thinking as well. So it might be a 36% or their 21% just in an ex bourbon cask. Maybe there's gotcha. somebody that's on the chat that is smarter than me because I'm just I'm just throwing darts and hoping one. Sam, you're close here. enough to Portland. You should know this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, pretty sure. coming from Indiana. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, feel free to uh, like chime in if you're feeling, feeling like feeling good about any of them or anything like that, or you just want to ask questions or ask somebody who they're you know what their favorite cheese is. Monster. I'm just waiting for my kid to to run in and crash the party. So. Oh yeah, don't worry. I've had it happen many of times. It's so I just got done with the bath time and everything like that. We we had a. We had a heartbreaker tonight. So my my kid, her her softball team, been doing amazing. Undefeated season. Uh, oh. Didn't lose a game the entire entire season. And then tonight was the tournament. And they go in and lose the first game of the tournament. And it's just like, oh, my God. And they lost it in uh, – it was like they played two extra innings because it was tied at the end. So it was just like – Super here. heartbreak, but I mean, it they're seven year olds, so ev- I think the parents wanted it more than anything. Like, all they cared about were getting popsicles at the end, so. yeah, yeah. And they should feel good just for getting that far, too, you know, the kids, not the parents. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. we all we kind of felt good about it. that's what we're <laughs> we're all like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, like, he had a great season. They're like, oh, it's okay. over, <laughs> yeah, can we go get a slushy or something? <laughs> <laughs> no more practices and games. This is great, yeah, I know. Assuming it was coach pitch softball. Yeah, it's coach pitch. Uh, so she'll be moving up to machine pitch here next uh, next season. Which, to my, uh, uh, I guess you could say my rookiness with it. So when I was signing her up, this was her first time ever playing. When I was signing her up for it, I said, "Well, you know, if you're gonna get ready for this, because I thought she had to go straight into machine pitch." So the first time she ever held a bat and took a swing at anything, I took her to the batting cages and were whipping balls at her 30 to 45 miles an hour. <laughs> and so, and she was, oh, and she was getting frustrated and you know, she wasn't making contact. And then she finally started making contact and she was really starting to hit them. And uh, so she was having fun. And then, you know, she hit one of them and everybody kind of knows like, if you're not holding it right, you get a stinger on your hands. Oh, she got one of those. And that was, that was it for the day. You just got to get through the time frame when they're just starting to learn how to pitch and they just mostly walk people the entire game. Oh, mm-hmm. gosh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, the, the coach so pitch. So they go to coach pitch, then machine, machine. pitch. Then, yep. yeah. Mine just did T-ball this year. So that, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll be, I guess, coach pitch next year. And I mean, I've heard T-ball is just like chaos. It's just like kids oh, are just running around. They hit and every single kid goes to the ball. <laughs> and like they tackle and fight each other, they push each Except other, the and then they're like, then Except they grab the, the ball and then they launch it over first baseman's head. <laughs> and then, like, or if if the first baseman's even paying attention, and it's like, or they just throw it to like their dad, <laughs> right? And then the dad's just like, ah, just throw it in there, <laughs> you know. That's funny. It, you know, Power Burbage says, uh, oh, yes, I saw that. Well, I mean, it was funny, like, because. Like stakes were riding high at this game, and so parents were getting into it, and they were, you know, they were like, because there's just all these like random rules, where, like, so if you swing four times and you miss, that means you get on a tee and you get to hit it, and if there's a runner on base, they can't, they can't run, and so unless it's a forced run and they have to go to the next base. So anyway, um, this girl hits it. Hits it to second base. The second baseman picks it up and runs it and tags her out at first. However, they said they can't do that because only the first baseman can actually hold the ball and tag on a first on a T hit. And we're all just like, where are these rules coming from? Uh, so believe me, the parents were just like in awe of like all this, like the shit that went down tonight. My kids played and they didn't have that rule, but I, I coached high school softball too. So um, 
the whole seeing the whole gamut of like little kids playing up to high school and college. It's, it's fun. <laughs> Nathan's saying, "I'm keep talking about. I'm 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 nosing at least over here. I haven't, I haven't started drinking yet. Don't get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I like the nose on three and four. I think. More I was about to say more. three. Three is maybe it's because like all the other ones are like huge proof bombs, but three I can get a lot more uh, more like just caramel and vanilla kind of flavors out. Yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of vanilla on all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little more almond on three as well. Vanilla, like vanilla Coke. Ooh, kind of. I always think Coke. caramel on uh, or caramel, depending on what part of the country you're in on four. Yep. Uh, and Nathan's asking like a, a funk note on two, and that's that's why I keep going back to it because it's out of all of them, I feel like the most different. I agree. I agree. Two is two is interesting. And Nathan, unfortunately, we're not going to have a Russell's Reserve 13-year review because we do not own any bottles of it, so we can't we can't do yeah. a review. Just look at Brian Bakey's. His is the best. Yeah. He is really impressed with his ability to do this. Yeah, so far, he's like, three's, three's knows the best. So he's definitely really opening up as they sit, too. For me. Yeah, they definitely change. And if anybody's curious about color or anything like that, here I'll try to blow myself up full screen so y'all can. Like two, two and three for me were the darkest. But which one's that, Kenny? That's two. And then here I'll show three. Or not three. I'm sorry, point. four. Two and four look the darkest. But yeah, there we go. That's three. And then is it we just think they're the darkest because they're the highest proof who knows <laughs> <laughs> they all look I keep similar tuning it out i keep forgetting their proofs so yeah i think you're right two and four are the darkest four is a little darker than mm -hmm. two, yeah, two and four for sure i'll I tell you what ryan and i we got we got schooled on something this past week we've been so we're in recording week as well and uh i won't i won't we won't give away too much of it but you're oh boy Put it, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put the put the bed in now that I think we'll start seeing more char one barrels start becoming more normal than yeah. char three and char four here in the near future. Why is that? Is that so they can age in lo longer? Age it shorter. Actually really? shorter. We okay. I would, thought the same thing, but yeah, that's weird. Because I guess the way it's explained is the huh. chicker or not. The thicker the char level is, uh, the harder it is to penetrate the wood. Gotcha. Okay. So with char one, one, uh, it it has a you know a light char, so there's not as thick of a layer to penetrate because the first layer just really doesn't add any flavors. It just kind of is a charcoal filter, um, and so it's able to penetrate and get more extraction. But you don't want to do a char one if you're planning on aging your whiskey longer. I think. Is the thing right, Kenny? Yep, that's correct. Um, and uh, so that's why most of them use three to four because most of them are the big boys, anyways, are bottling at you know six to eight, ten, twelve years old. Mm -hmm. So you want to you want to do a lighter char in a shorter barrel time. Correct. Yeah, and I think this is all just pretty recent because they can now like study and analyze it. Yeah, and so they're now they're just understanding that. So I think you'll see more people moving towards the lower chars to to get more rapid aging. I guess. Yeah, the they're just saying. One. Oh, he was just saying like a lot more of the barrel characteristics actually come out in the the lower char levels, and you can do it in a shorter amount of time. So he's we had so we, anyway we had somebody from Independent Stave on, and that's why we got totally schooled on on some stave science. So it'll be it'll be a really fun podcast for y'all to listen to when we get to time to release it. Nice. Now, is the char one still heavier than the toasted? Yes, it's because yes. toasting. Yeah, because charring still setting it on fire, but only I think it's like what fifteen seconds or something like that, twenty seconds. Whereas toasting is, I mean, it's exactly what you think. It's like it's keeping it just away from like touching it. You know, kind of like what yeah. you would with a marshmallow. Like if this was the fire, you're gonna hold it like yeah. up here. So some more flavors concept. come out with toasting than char, um, because of that char level. Uh, yeah, it's all interesting, and 
we're probably butchering it, but it, it'll be a great episode. <laughs> That's why we have the pros come on. Yeah. It sounds like it, the char becomes like a charcoal filter, like you said, right? Exactly. Like, you know, yeah. And it, it takes longer to get through. Yeah. So, so back to some tasting notes here, uh, cause we want to give the people what they want. Uh, by the way, I just tried number one It's the first time trying any of these for myself. I thought it was super sweet. I was like, Holy <laughs> shit. I'm yes. really, I'm really impressed by this. Yeah. I got like a vanilla Coke float ice cream kind of thing going but, on yeah as soon as i taste that i go back to the the nose on two and the nose on two is really stand out now now i'm like getting like some cinnamon on it and some other things mm -hmm. finish on one just keeps going too it's it so does. long and it's not yeah. like it's 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 not a hot you know burning no. type finish you know <clears throat> i don't get any of that like red uh you know any of that red hot type of candy burn um like i'm well i don't want to cloud anyone else's but two and three the finish is not as nice i think as one i get a little peppery finish in one at the very end yep yeah two uh i really like the palette on two it's got like some vanilla it's got some raisins got some the, like cherry hot tamale candy flavors mm -hmm. and it kind of has like a slight like musty finish that i kind of think is interesting um uh, like a dusty kind of thing going uh yeah, very two. faint on yeah. two is what you're saying yeah, I, yeah it, is, it is really it's, it's really different than the others i think for sure i was about to say one and two are vastly different yeah yeah, yeah one's like all sweet to me um sweet creamy little that like little spicy like a coke acid finish kind of on it but uh yeah two's kind of got a lot more complexity a little bit i get a little bit little tannins on one but not too much for me how many can we get that's the question. <laughs> I believe just one on this one. I I was honestly, I'd just be happy if we only got a choice between one and two um, at this point. Yeah. But <laughs> good thing we got two more to go through, and then yeah, they're both really good. I have a feeling votes are going to be split hard on all these. <laughs> and yeah. three is even way different. <laughs> I think two is the most different out of the four of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like the palette on two more than one, but I like the finish on one more than two. Yeah, me too. I feel like Kenny's gonna like three. It's got some nice oak in there. I mean, let me get to that. Let me get to that. Two I haven't gotten good. there. You're actually you're actually beating me for once. Usually I'm I'm like done by now. I'm like trying to get Ryan to catch up with me. <laughs> I don't think we're making a bad decision tonight. No, no, they're no. These first no, three yeah. I've tried have been excellent, really. Yeah. And you're right with number three. It's like you get that vanilla Coke float. I mean, it's just like you got a scoop of vanilla ice cream in there or something. Yep. Palette right. dialed in right now. I had a few cocktails earlier at Chicken to Me. So nice. <clears throat> All right. What's more important, nose or finish? Um, I finish. That's I'd, what probably remember. Say, I'd probably say finish. I'd probably say finish as well. It's like because you really care about the because you you could have a mediocre nose, but if it tastes and the finish is amazing, then it yeah. it it revives it. Versus <laughs> like if you taste it, it knows okay, but the nose is amazing. That's kind of like the uh, the, what was it? The Grand Reserve. What have we tried? That forty year old bourbon, Ryan. Oh gosh, yeah, Final the, Reserve. Yeah, final reserve. I mean, the nose was amazing. Like, you, you could, wish you could make a Yankee candle out of it, but the taste was like, ooh, wow. this is this is a tannic My cheeks, bomb. My oh, cheeks my just like sucked in, <laughs> like so dry and bitter. I feel like this has some tan on it, tannins on it on three. You're right. I do like three. <laughs> yeah, I knew it'd be right in your wheelhouse. It's, it's really, I hate to say this, but it's really smooth with that lower proof. It is, yeah, compared to the other. <laughs> lower proof at 118. That's <laughs> well, I know, but it's still it's 5%, you know? <laughs> I, I like three only because it feels like it's a good mix of one and two. Like, you get a lot that's that sweetness um, mm -hmm. that you have on one, yeah. but you get a little bit of the more complexity, I think, that you're getting out of two. 
However, I'll have to we'll have to come back to these again for science. I still purposes. like a long finish in one. Yeah. Yeah, I just went back to one and I really I think I like it better after trying a few others. So I'm yeah, one is good. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, unfortunately, you cannot pick up your bottle from the distillery because they all have to go back to California no matter Three what. Three tier system. You can thank yeah. that. Write your congressman, write your uh, local representative, president, <laughs> like whoever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Abolish a three tier system. And, well, actually, it's all based on the state. So we got to, we actually have to take this all the way to like we, the Constitution Amendment is what, what we have to do. Yeah, these I take all three of them really. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me like when we did the the whistle pig pick that we're getting ready to release. When yeah. we we had two seventeens and a sixteen year old, and we're like, can we just get all three? <laughs> I mean, that was because they were that good. It was hard to choose between them. Yeah, we don't get to pick a lot of thirteen year, but it's like when you taste stuff in like that eight to. Uh, to me, like fourteen year is like, good God, that's like the sweet spot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. When I get to the nose on four, the nose on four even gets a little bit more enhanced. Now that I'm, because this is my, this is my first drinks of the night, so I don't know about you all. This is me just kind of getting dialed in. Yeah, I saved myself for this. <laughs> I just, I you had, you had drinks earlier today. That's true. We were drinking at 10 a.m. today, though. That's a little bit different. <laughs> I tried to calibrate and, and cracked a sample of a uh, OC uh, American Whiskey Batch Four that someone had sent, and Did I mean these are these are knocking it out of the park, you know. And that was the first pour of the night, so you know, take it for what it is. But man, I'm gonna have a hard time. Like it's it might just be like a randomizer or something. Oh, we're yeah. gonna call you Nate the hype machine. That's what we're gonna do. Is we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have you go and hype this one up, man. Because I haven't had a, a lot of the old Carter stuff, and so I have no idea what the baseline against. So I'm literally going by what everybody is telling me in, uh -huh. in our Discord and stuff like that, saying this is gonna be this is gonna be the next the next shit right here. So. Yeah, if it wasn't for the Discord, I wouldn't have actually tried a lot of that stuff. So, uh, big yeah, time. plug, big plug for the Discord group. What's up, everybody? Heck yeah! Wish you guys could be here, <laughs> <laughs> or or not. <laughs> there's only so much sampling to go around. Right. I know. I was impressed. There's this many to go around. Hmm. Any idea how many bottles they'll get out of the barrel for this being a 13? I know. Barrel? We might just need to pick the biggest barrel. <laughs> I wish we could. <laughs> um, good question. We will not know that. God yeah. damn, four is good too. This oh, is no. tough. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you could just blindfold me and I'll just put my finger on one and I, yeah. it's not going to be bad. Yeah. Has four. it ever been this much of a wash like in previous you know, tastings? I mean, <clears throat> typically we can. We can knock out one or two of them relatively easily. Like even going to Elijah Craig and, you know, they give us three barrels. You know, we can say like, yeah, like we'll taste it again, but we know we don't like it, you know, but this is, this is pretty difficult. The only I'm, go I'm going backwards now and it definitely changed. I'm like nitpicking here, like really hard <laughs> just to try to <laughs> like four Four on the finish, like it's there's like a, it's almost like the alcohol starts to take over on the back end, where yeah. it's like it's just a little hot on the back end. But I'm I'm really just nitpicking here to to try to differentiate some of them. No, but you're right. It gets you know it's got that really sweet up front, and then yeah, the, the front mid palate's great, and then it just explodes into the alcohol. Yeah, it's a short finish into the the heat. Yeah. I think I originally I thought four was like my least favorite, and then I try it again, and I'm like, I would, I would keep drinking this though, like all night. Tonight. I know so, mm -hmm. this is very nitpicky because I don't know oh. what to do with all these. <laughs> Fours. Really I know what to do with them all. We bottle them all, but. <laughs> <laughs> I like Nathan. I he's got. He's bringing the marijuana up in the. 
oh, in the we chat there. Oh, there we go. Uh, oddly enough, we had another uh, topic, another a podcast we recorded this week about marijuana. So we had the author of Cornbread Mafia, uh, Fred and I did an interview with him. If you haven't heard of Cornbread Mafia, go and check it out. It's a book. You can get it on Audible. That's what I listen to it story. on. It's, uh, it's about America's largest marijuana um, bust, heist, ring, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it was in the 1980s, and it all took place in Lebanon, Kentucky. Hmm. And it's, it's, it's cool. It's a really good story. It talks about how like they called Lebanon the... Uh, what would they say the Fort Lauderdale of Kentucky because they were really <laughs> loose with their laws and people people used to drive from Louisville to Lebanon to go party. Yeah, go to go to there was Fergie's and Bickett's and all the great mm -hmm. bars there. People get knife though there, so I stopped going. Experience—that's <laughs> <laughs> a good reason. Uh, you know. I stay. I, I tend to stay away from those places. Yeah. 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 It's uh characters everywhere, but uh, yeah, it's all the moonshiners. You know, they took. Uh, you know, they used to peddle moonshine, and then you know, what do you do when prohibition ends and whiskey's legal? You start slinging marijuana. You know, instead. So. Yeah, yeah and there was—I mean, there was a, a great backstory to it as well and that is because during around in that area and before prohibition most of that area they worked at distilleries and yep. that was what they i mean that's what they knew how to do so as soon as prohibition hit the people were out of work and the only thing that they knew how to do was make whiskey and so they resorted to moonshining and so there was just this rampant amount of moonshining that was happening around the area. And this is also the time that, um, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, what's his name? Capone. Uh, no, it's not Capone. It's uh, what's the other? Uh, Remus. When Remus, George, yeah, yeah, yeah. George Remus came into the, the picture here and got his medicinal whiskey license and ended up um, buying stocks because – Here's the thing is that it was illegal to make whiskey, but it was not illegal to keep storing the whiskey that you already had. And so what he would do is he would go and buy all this whiskey and then he would put it on his trucks and then he would have his trucks be intercepted by his own people. And then they would take that and then bootleg it up to Chicago. So he was kind of like getting full circle here. He was getting it, uh, you know, he was buying it, getting it stolen from himself collecting insurance on it all at the same exact time. So it was a, it was a good racket he had. Yeah. All right. Back to one. Now I'll, I'll quit giving history lessons and giving away the, the podcast. <laughs> that gave me some time to really zone in and try to <laughs> distinguish some, some differences here. It's not really working out, but <clears throat> Well, I mean, it's it's good to go back from four and then go back to one because you definitely notice a change in, in the profile and what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, I was going to say, to me, like, after going through them all, all over the place, one just has the most, like, welcoming nose. Like, it's just so – it's kind of – it's not as aggressive as four, but it's not as soft as three. It's, like, right in the middle there for me. I yeah, just, I like, like, I can't get enough of this of one's nose. Yeah, one is the most balanced, I think. Out yeah. of all of them, um, yeah, it's like one's the most balanced. Two has the most complexity. Three's really good, uh, <laughs> but lower proof. And four's really good, but it's a little spicy at the end. I don't know. This is tough. I'm trying to really nitpick here. Yeah, four is extremely, extremely aggressive for me. Yeah, I think I'm one or two. I. I by a, by a thin margin, but maybe one or two. Well, let's not sway any votes yet. Let's let's wait. I'm happy to I'm happy to keep drinking three and four. <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. keep drinking, keep drinking. We'll we'll get we'll get uh we'll get our first round of votes here in the next like probably five or six minutes. So go ahead and keep nosing, keep drinking. <laughs> try to come away with a a top one and a top two, and then we'll so we'll try to figure out if we want to do one vote or two votes. Damn. Yeah. 
I think I'm just going to go with the top four. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have a top three. Does that help? <laughs> no, it doesn't, actually. It doesn't help at all. So what is... All right, so Bull Run, besides their 13-year American whiskey, what else do they do? Uh, so they are distilling some of their own stuff. I know they have uh, an American single malt that they're doing. Um, they've done a lot of sourcing, so they're doing some uh, American whiskey Pinot finishes. They've been doing some other, we're going to just bourbon finishes. Uh, when we were selecting of actually what we wanted, they gave us the option of doing one of those 15 year Kentucky bourbons that, you know, have been out in the market, yeah. but you know, beam stuff. Yeah. But they said, you know, SRP would have been $175 and I was like, yeah, we're probably not going to do that. Um, they said SRP on these were about 60 to 70. And I was like, okay, I think we could probably swing oh, that. Yeah. This is a great yeah. value. Holy hell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was, that's why I was just like, we'll do that. Plus I took it to discord I mean, and let those guys have a vote first. And that's kind of what it, what it came down to. I mean, I know you're no poo pooing on the old Carter, but even at that price, I think it's a, I don't know. I've, I think it's, it's, these are really good. I've had $200 whiskeys that are way worse. Yeah. I think, and they, I, I think that's just the, Maybe that's the thing that like turns people off about it. It's not that it's bad. It's actually really good. It's the fact that you're charging what you're charging for American whiskey. And I think that's where people might get a little bit kind of hung up on hung it. Up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just because it's nothing wrong with the category. It's just that it's not as hot as bourbon. And that's kind of what it comes down to. If it was as hot as, I mean, if this was bourbon, then yeah, people would be like, even if it tasted the same exact way, but this was labeled as bourbon, it would oh, justify yeah. the price. It's just the fact that anytime you make an American whiskey and you try to put it on the shelf, everybody just doesn't give a shit about it because it doesn't say bourbon on the label. That's my that's my rant. I'll, I'll end it there. <laughs> so I'm trying oh, to I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So okay, so why would you? Did you see Shem's. Yeah, I just, I just put just, these in X put it up there. cask versus a new cask from the get-go. Well, because then it would, wouldn't would be American whiskey. Well, then it I would just that. be bourbon. Well, I get that exactly, but why would you do that 30, I don't know. Maybe years a, ago? Well, I mean, it's probably because you have all these... I mean, 13 years ago, you probably had a bunch of barrels sitting around. Nobody was making furniture out of them or brewing beers with them. So they probably just had a bunch of this shit sitting around. So they're like, let's... I mean, the, the stills were still running. So start dumping them in something and we'll figure it out later. Yeah, that's my that's a, my hypothesis. There's a lot of things I wish I had done in bourbon 13 years ago, so I'm not going to blame <laughs> them. That's, that's yeah. everything. Looking back 13 years. <laughs> yeah. I, I finally crossed one off my list. I finally have a top three. Yeah, I have Same a top two. two was, I, think, I think it was a... I don't know. I... I I kind of had to just hallucinate that there was only a top two, but I'm going with the gut feeling approach. So, and I'm ranking like based on nose, taste, and finish. And then looking at how many, you know, who outscores who, and then going from that. So, okay. So, next question is, is how much of samples do you all have left to, if we were to do another round and it, and it took down to two, would, would oh, we have I enough? Got, I got yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give everybody two votes. So you can pick your top two. All right. And, uh, and then from there, we will take it down to the top two and decide whether uh, we narrow it down from there. Is that you saying? Yeah. Okay. We'll put you on mute just for a second. So, uh, you take yourself off mute when when uh, people aren't dumping garbage around there or something. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Um, so we'll do we'll do two. Like I said, top two, um, and we'll taste from there, and then we'll vote again. And we're gonna get one vote, and we'll try to find our our favorite from there. And if by some chance Uncle Shem kicks back over and says we can get two, then I, I we'll take two. All right. So if um, if number one is in your top two, go ahead and raise your hand. All right, so you got one, two, four, five, right? All right, so 
one, two, three, four, five. Uh, number two. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, this is not a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, count me in. Count me in on that. Count me in on oh, that. Oh, Sarah. I, I was. Don't. I was. I was wrestling between two and four. Don't be swayed. You, it's okay. You want to be in on that? You, you, you do you, Sam. Don't worry about it. We're, we're getting. We're getting ready to move on to three. You tell me. Let me do five. one. One and two. One and two. Okay. All right. Uh, number three, if that was in your top two. One, two, three, four. Fucking shit. We're at five again. <laughs> well, right. I think you're going to be eliminate four then. All right. Four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. God damn it. Okay. So now you've got. <laughs> All right. So two. Or sorry. So number two is already in the final because uh, Sam helped move that and, and move the, uh, the needle a little bit more. So we got six votes on that one. We got five on the other two. So five between one and three. Um, so two's in. Or no. Two's in the finals. Okay. Two's in the finals. In the finals. So we got to decide um, between one and three. Do oh. like vapor pour, like super, super tiny. And yeah, from there, we will we'll decide vapor between. Pour. You get one vote between one and three. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell Shem next time that we need to have odd numbers here. <laughs> I think I was the last add-on because uh, I was like the, the last alternate, so... You would have eliminated me, Kenny, but that's okay. It's okay. We're glad you're here. You can eliminate me. But then who would like bring out those, you know, crazy food notes, you know? I <laughs> need those. Yeah, it's it's very true. We have to have Ryan here or beer beer sure, would... but we'll we'll boot Kenny out. He does nothing except talk about softball. <laughs> true. I'm kidding. That's true. Totally All kidding. I do is I just keep the, the thing the tray moving forward. I, I keep that's everybody right. corral. If it were up to me, I'd be like so into it, like, uh, oh yeah, we're on a barrel pick. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, ha having spent time with you in a conference room, you being the one to keep the train moving forward kind of surprises me, you know? I, I like to, well, when it comes into actual work, I like to take a back seat and let other people kind of do it. And then I wait till my name gets called, do my thing <laughs> and exit stage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was it? Uh, so we're between one and three, right? Yeah. So Nathan says we should start our own distillery. And uh, I'll tell you why this will never happen. And that's because, well, a, a, yeah, we don't want to go raise, you know, $30 million to go and start a distillery. Um, yeah. But the second reason why is because Ryan, Fred, and myself don't feel like going back to school and being chemistry majors. And, it's it's one of those things that you know we know that we can we know what great finished whiskey and great finished bourbon tastes like and ryan has done a fantastic knockout job of doing some blending and and kind of getting us on the right path of everything we're doing on pursuit united but we're not going to go ahead and um restart our careers to try to be distillers it's it's not it there's already people that out there that do it way better than us and there's a lot better places that are equipped to do it as well so yeah. it's just a uh, it would be a, it's a lot smarter move to let people well, take over that blending's hard enough so we can't handle i don't think we can handle distilling what about just tinkering in a garage you know getting a still and setting it up at ryan's house or whatever and you know, not blowing anything up, but you know, yeah, I have a hard time changing oil. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And last thing I want to do is figure out how to doubler and, and start doing my own copper welding. I'm not going to, it's not fun to me. So don't use lead. That's, that's all I know. There you go. All right. Unless it's a really good dusty, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. Totally. Those lead decanters brings the best out of them. <laughs> All right. Does everybody have their vote on their favorite versus one versus three? You only get one vote this yep. time. It's so hard. This one Anthony, was Tim, you got your got your top. Yeah. All right. Yep. I think I might flip a quarter. All right. I swear to God, if four people raise their hand on this, I'm gonna be fucking mad. All right. <laughs> if number one's your favorite, raise your hand. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not ready. Oh. All right, go ahead. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, number one's your favorite. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> oh no! Come on, when are you? When are you getting the right. hand up? Hang on. It is Hang definitely on. my favorite. 
the Should we give reasons? Favorite. We can give reasons, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Please, 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 votes. Please. Our case. Shem the ninth. Shem the ninth. He's Shem, Shem is trying to come That's... in here and uh, and he's 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 trying to insert because he's tasting with us. He's got a few samples too. Three, so maybe yeah. maybe we let him kind of be the the ninth player here. There you go. He's, I think that's reasonable. Tied I was going to say Kenny and I should sit out, but it doesn't matter cuz we're we're picking the same thing. So Yeah. Well, if we're picking the same thing, then the name's number 1 wins. Yeah, that's true. So maybe we go ahead and uh How about we sit uh, this out then, let the people uh, I'll go one. Out. I'll break the tie. I'll go one. See, that's that's all we needed. We need we need somebody yeah. to kind of make that happen, and and we'll we'll let Shem say that he made it, um, as well. So I right, literally so, could flip a coin on those. So I'm very too. happy it's with tough. one. I okay, was so I was the same way. I was I was flipping a coin. So so three's out. Everything is now down to number one versus number two. So go ahead and repour, and we will come again and do. And by I the way. We I thought we were just getting two barrels. I thought that's the way. I thought it was just one and two, and it was done. We we haven't and we haven't heard that back yet. It's uh, we agreed to we, though. We need to. Well, it, listen. If it comes down to it, I felt we'll like that it. was. However, if it, but we need to uh, have a decision. If it doesn't come down to it, and because at this point, people out in Portland might not answer until tomorrow. So it is. It is after working hours for them. Sure. Six forty nine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so get one and two, and then start tasting. Leave a little bit left, just in case. Go back down to a, another goddamn tie. Yeah, man, one is like super low on my end. If that gives you an idea, but like low and low and how much you like it. I need to no, like low and low and how much, much volume left. I have left. I need to. I need to really be mindful of my sips here. Okay. I'll just take a little and chew for a while. Just know me just, just when keep the nosing. more the more I have left of it, the more I like. Because usually I'm like, all right, I know that's good, and then um, the other ones I'm like trying to convince myself. But mm -hmm. that's actually a that's, that's a brilliant point. That could be why. Not to uh, be in your head, Nate. <laughs> when I first you're, tasted you're always my head, Ryan. <laughs> an hour ago, it was my least favorite, but. Now, after it's been sitting in the glass for a while, it's it's my first favorite. By yeah, the way, I like was that Tim. Two. Yeah. 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 I like what uh, Ethan said here. That says we'll end up buying an old craft distillery somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if that'll ever happen, but no. I pre I appreciate the uh, the thought. It would be amazing if that ever happened. But is there I one in Lebanon, Kentucky? Well, we we gotta wait until Lebanon starts a party scene again, and then we might be into it. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I want to start driving out to Lebanon every day just to go to Man. work. Yeah, we had that same conversation with the our friend from ISC here last night as well. He's like, "Come on down, we can do some barrels research." I was like, "Can you pick us up on the way?" <laughs> <laughs> He's getting out to Lebanon. It's it's a hike. It's a hike to get to Maker's Mark. An hour and a half. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. He's got to do that every day. Oh, yeah. Oh man, so it's 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 tough. Tough. I mean, this is impossible. So, so Jesus. Nathan's been on this whole cannabis kick, and and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this is this is what's going to happen. I will is do that, it, Nathan. I'm already in the hemp stuff. So, well, no, so so here's here, it's twofold. Um, one is that anybody that's already doing hemp or doing CBD is already going to be well set up to actually when this this you know this flip switches that or switch flips that you'll be able to go and start going all in right away the other thing is that anybody that's out of state whether they're in colorado california uh you know illinois michigan that have legalized cannabis it's not gonna be hard for them to come in swoop into any other state that just turns on legalized marijuana and they can start supplying it so any state that doesn't hasn't had it legalized yet and thinks that they're going to start a new company, it's going to be at a huge disadvantage because there's already massive companies that already navigated all the roadblocks that they've already had to go through. So, and there's a lot of yeah. overhead, like you were saying. The you, you can't you, your grow facility is going to have these filters, so it doesn't you can't smell the pot outside and all that kind of stuff. It's it's not just 
you know, buying a bunch of Miracle Grow and getting some seeds there. <laughs> As much as it well, sounds sounds great to do, you're right. And it's a it's a well, much bigger operation than that. You don't yeah. have to do it indoors here. Our climate's perfect for it. Mm -hmm. it grows yeah, great here. I was but gonna say it, it grows it grows really well in the ditch behind the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Where you live but at, this, Anthony? Like in the neighborhood, the smell they they won't. Let, I don't. This, in Massachusetts, that, it's cool, but the smell will they won't let you just grow it anywhere outdoors as much as you want because of the smell. I got gotcha. this. This is just ditch weed. It grows naturally here in Nebraska. Nice. Okay. Ditch weed. <laughs> Isn't that how uh, the Johnny Boone got caught? So he like had cornfields up in Minnesota, and then they developed a frost like resistance uh, strain of marijuana. And no. then there was a the the problem was is because they had a huge. Uh, uh, what did you say? Was it uh, Minnesota? Is that what you, yeah. what you said? Yeah. So they had a huge farm, a huge, I mean, it, they had said it was like 90 tons. Yeah, yeah. That was in Minnesota. And then they had a frost come over one night because what they would do is they would surround it by corn. Right. And yep. and so what happened was is they had a frost come in one night and then the frost basically started killing off all the corn. But yeah, right. you're right. The they had some, they green. had some marijuana. Little it was more resistant to it, and so you could start seeing it through the road. And they said we got to start harvesting this stuff now. And they didn't get very far until they got busted. Yeah, it was like a rare frost in like June in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and it just like <laughs> damn weather. Warning, got them again. But really, how long is it going to be till it's federally legalized with all the states legalizing right now? I, I think it'll be longer in Kentucky just because yeah. of the bourbon. Because they, they've proven that alcohol consumption goes down in those states by a couple per percentage points. Oh, really? And you might not think that's a lot, but when you're talking about billions of dollars, <clears throat> it adds up. So the bourbon companies are trying to keep it out. That's what I yeah. hear from uh, my lobbying friends. <laughs> but if it's legalized federally, it doesn't matter at that point. Right. Yeah, but it's still up to states to, you know, they can COVID prove that, that, yeah, federal can say whatever, and then states can choose and local governments can choose. So. The same way you can have a dry county, right? Or right, whatever. exactly. Yep. You could sell pot in the airport. Exactly. Duty free. <laughs> Yeah, pop an edible for your flight, dude. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, perfect. I've done it many times. <laughs> so I'm I'm so split between one and two. So this is the way I feel: is that like one provides a very unique palette and flavor profile, super sweet. I actually wrote down coconut this time, kind of a little bit different. Whereas two definitely reminds me a little bit more of just a regular bourbon profile. Maybe it's just because we've been trying these so often that it just that's what it reminds me of. But Man. I'm, I'm here to I'm I'm here to hear more criticism from you all too. Do you have different samples? Because I think yeah. the vice versa. Really? That's what, I, that's what I was thinking. I mean, in two yeah. to me, the like the it's got like the funk factor, which I have grown to love. Uh, kind of learning about this stuff, wow. and I think it tastes to me. It's like more complex. Like one is like just a hair thinner, if that makes sense. You know, like I want a viscous, like, you know, complex, weird, you know, funky bourbon and, or, you know, whiskey. And that's, that's what two is. And that was the gut feeling from like the very get go for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One is like, it's so perfectly balanced. It's got yeah. sweetness. It's got just enough spice. It's got that cola flavor, brown sugar, um, creaminess to it it's the fin it's Sorry. like great the finish is really long on one which i it, it's yeah, like, yeah. You get a good glass of wine or something too not to mix my liquor but gosh so it boils like down to who do you pick for like are you picking are you picking for the whiskey nerds <laughs> or like the masses you're the whiskey me, nerds. like yeah right like i know that's, we're on this. that's why that's why two, <laughs> that's why i feel like two is better um, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, him, again, I gotta shut up and not sweat votes here. I think yeah. two is more just like, as far as how much flavor I get punched in the face with two is 
definitely a little bit more for me. Yeah. So, um, I do. I do. That. Yeah. It's just more of that, like, you know, that like Elijah Craig barrel proof, just like, Ag- there it aggressive. is. You know, and, it's aggressive. Yeah. And one is like definitely it. balanced, you know, for sure. But, um, yeah, but after you've you know, been drinking 128 proof bourbon or whiskey for the past, you know, 58 minutes, you're like, ah, now we can start <laughs> tasting some flavors out of here. Yeah. Gosh, it's tough. Yeah, I, I I don't know what to do, really. I mean, I've got a vote. Does anybody else have a vote? You ready to kind of go to the, the end here? Yeah, I have a vote. All right. So let's let's do this. I swear to God, if four people raise their hand. All right. Like a little bit less. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just, well, let me, and don't just raise your hand try. to piss me off either. Gosh. So, and I know somebody probably will do that. All right. Neck and neck, dude. We're we're gonna go opposite this time. If number two is your favorite, raise your hand. Just me. Great. So number one. Oh, let's go. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm on two. Kenny, I was mid poor, but I <laughs> all right. So like two better. I'm so the person two. that wants to order last at the table in the restaurant because I am indecisive. So I just literally decided right now. <laughs> all right. So it, that means so number one's your favorite. Raise your hand. All right. Number one Man. wins it. How about it? It was Finn. close, like Finn two. Margin. Two was so complex. There was just a little bit of alcohol burn at the end that he, yeah. I didn't like. Whereas one, but two was so good. I don't know. That was tough. It was the, tough. All, all four of them were so good. I just Shem, didn't pick them. Make really. it like happen, said, man. Yeah, Shem, make it happen. There we go. So rank one and two. But who knows if if Shem can pull some strings? Maybe we'll talk to Bull Run. See if we can get one and two. We'll see what happens. Uh, it was. I mean, this was so this good. was pretty split. Uh, and so I'm I'm very happy with what we came away with. And yeah, honestly, guys, I'm 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 not gonna say I'm disappointed we didn't pick two. I thought it was great, but hey, one was one was a stunner as well. So very good, Sam. I saw you down there drinking a, a Topo Chico. I saw that some talk on Discord a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I was I was talking about it in the Discord, and and then other people were too. But yeah, this is my between He's Gucci. I'm not so. <laughs> so Costco. The, 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 yeah. the story the story behind this is that what what's a good palate cleanser? And some people chimed in and said Topo Chico is a really good palate cleanser, and I was like, that's that's a odd thing to do. I've never heard of that, but maybe we should get on that and do it for science. What is hey, go, to, go to Costco and get those seventeen ounces in big old bottles. Oh yeah, I love Topo Chico. I love the lime ones, and then you throw like a shot of tequila in there, and they're like, that, that's what happens when you're drunk. But it's uh, they're really well, no, good. It's, Anyways, it, there's there's a drink for it. Uh, Tim asked what it is, so it's it's um, I mean, it's just like a sparkling kind of like a seltzer. Seltzer, right? I mean, it, but it's not. Yeah. It's well, not it's, a. It's mineral water, but it's it's not like as. Um, it's not as minerally tasting as say like a uh, San Pellegrino or Perrier or whatever. It's pretty yeah, cool. and it's and it's out of Texas, right? Yep. Uh, and it's from well, no, it's from Mexico. 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 Okay. It's funny. Like, you're like, don't they... go to Mexico and drink the water, but you put a tub of chico and you're like, oh, we'll drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure the water that goes into Corona is just as great, huh? <laughs> yeah. I think Corona's bought on like New York or something. Oh so, yeah, I mean it, it, it's it's I mean it's like Budweiser. They've got like nine different breweries around the United States to be able to yeah. you know create it and ship it to wherever. So I mean it is what it is. But you know everybody, I want to say thank you again for for jumping on here. And I totally forgot to give a plug for the the thirty five people that are still live on this. So if you want to know how we you know distribute bottles, how we get all these barrel picks and. If you want to be like one of the guys down here selecting a barrel with us, please, 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 please join us. Uh, we've got a, a great community at, uh, you can go to barrel club or sorry, bourbonpursuit.com. And then you, there's a barrel club link at the top. It has all the information on there. You sign up through Patreon and Patreon is, is your kind of gateway, but everything else happens outside of it. So we'll send email updates and reminders and purchase links and everything through there. And so we got a whole system built around it. Um, but that is the way that you help not only get access to great whiskey and fun barrel picks, 
but you also help support the podcast and everything we do and uh, the salaries that we spend all these hours of you know, doing this and editing and all, all the kind of crazy crap that we have to go through. But uh, again, cheers and thank you to everybody that does support us yeah. because we couldn't do what we do without you all. Truly, truly, we truly. We certainly appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. So thank you. For, for sure. Not a day goes by. We don't. Um, we've got, I don't know what else we have on the radar for barrel picks coming up. I know we are releasing. I feel like a, we've done a shit ton. We are on track to do almost 50 this year. So oh boy, that's a lot. Uh, we had, we had budgeted last year. We just creeped and hit 40. And this year we were on track to at least hit 40 and potentially hit 50. Well, you know, when we're able to hit two, if we can get like two bull runs here, who knows? Like the, it just keeps stacking up there. Go to 51. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I do know that there is a sign up and it's going to be happening soon for Patreon folks to be able to join us on a 1792 foolproof pick. There are, uh, let's see. We just got locked in for a, an Elijah Craig barrel proof pick. So Ooh. a lot of good things that are happening or, uh, we're going to keep and next year. We're going to do the burn pursuit event, right? Yes. Well, Weekend 2022, long. uh, we'll try to make that happen. Ryan, I forgot to talk about this last time. We'll, we'll try to see if we can get a, uh, just a quick kind of locals event, maybe at, you know, Frankfurt Avenue or somewhere around here, just kind of have a, a happy hour one night, just kind of have people around, but maybe, uh, sometime in July or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you, Shim. Um, well, right, yeah, right. we have, yeah. we have five Russell's barrels that are coming in. Um, Got to be coming in at some point. We selected those earlier this year and we just got off the phone Ooh, this week. Ranch, so yes, we have is. locked in a barrel of Frey Ranch that will be happening. Um, so that's super, super excited. Anybody that doesn't know about Frey Ranch, you're missing out. Uh, it is probably one yeah. of the ultimate craft distillers that are out there coming out of uh, Nevada, I think. Isn't that correct? Uh, yes. Nevada. Yeah. Yep. yeah you'll be it's you'll about be. the Tahoe pleasantly that pleasantly right. surprised about that yeah so pretty it's gonna be pretty awesome so a lot of cool things coming i know i'm just rambling now but i'm gonna go ahead and end it but thank you all once again for tuning in we will let you know next time we do a barrel selection but please go ahead uh, if you can like subscribe find our channel we're trying to put out new content well actually we do put out uh, a whiskey quickie on tuesdays and a podcast every thursday but with that we'll go ahead and uh, in the broadcast guys stay on here real quick we'll talk a little bit afterwards but cheers everybody thank you so much for tuning in uh, on the live chat and being here with us and like i said we'll let you know next time we do this cheers everybody and we'll see you next time toodles <laughs>